It's very common to see hotels that link to a shopping mall nowadays. It's for the convenience for hotel guests as well as it can be a great selling point for the hotel itself. But does that really give a benefit all the way to hotel guests? Hi, welcome to Danny on the Go Special Season 2. I'm Danny. Today, I'm going to give my personal review on the well-known pavilion Hotel Kuala Lumpur. Review begins in 14 seconds. The Pavilion Hotel Kuala Lumpur is managed by Bayan Tree Group and may not be a very high-rise and new hotel in Kuala Lumpur, but its super strategic location, it became one of the first choice for guests to stay wherever they come to this city. The Jalan Bukit Bintang or the Bukit Bintang Street is the most famous shopping street in Malaysia since the early 70s. The Pavilion Hotel Kuala Lumpur is located right in the beginning of the street where it was used to be the Bukit Bintang Girls School which was demolished in year 2000 and made way to the Pavilion Project which consists of a shopping mall and a 5-star hotel which is where I am now. The hotel officially opened its door in year 2018. It has 18 floors and consists of 325 rooms and suites. Today, I'm going to stay in the City Oasis Twin Room, supposedly, which comes with breakfast and if you want to know how much I pay for the room, you may check on the description below. Why am I saying supposedly? Well, I will say I was not given what I requested and had not had a good impression for this hotel. I will let you know what happened. Before I continue, please do subscribe my channel as it means a lot to me. And do stay on until the end of the video as I will have important information and my personal rating for this hotel. This is how the rough layout of the hotel building looks like. The basement two levels are the car parks. The ground floor is the hotel entrance lobby. Level 2 to 5 belongs to the shopping mall. Level 6 or 7M is the event halls. Level 7 is the hotel bar. Level 8 is the hotel lobby and restaurants. Level 9 all the way to level 13 are the hotel rooms. Level 14 to 17 are the club lounge and club rooms. Level 18 is where the hotel facilities are. <music> If you are driving to this hotel like what I'm doing, the hotel parking is located under the shopping mall too, but in a separate corner. It's a one-way street along Jalan Raja Chulan and will pass by a few junctions for loading and drop-off for the shopping mall on the right. After all these junctions, there will be a parking junction for shopping mall and hotel on the right. You may turn in here as what the sign shows. After turning in, just keep left for the hotel parking. This time, I will be using the entrance for the hotel parking which pass by the hotel entrance further up. As this is the heart of the city, traffic is always heavy here. So just be careful and keep right all the way. You will see a sign for hotel entrance on the right and just follow the way and will pass by the entrance of the hotel as you see here. Drive all the way till the end and follow the ramp down to the basement of the hotel.
Upon reaching the ticket barrier, collect the ticket. Then there will be a sign for hotel parking and just follow it and will come to another ticket barrier. This time, just insert the ticket you just collected to the machine and collect the ticket back as it comes out from the machine. The ticket barrier will raise and now you are in the hotel basement parking. Parking is complimentary for hotel guests for one car per room. Upon leaving the hotel, just get the ticket validated at the reception and insert again in the auto pay machine before collecting your car and you are good to go. I am fortunate enough to get a parking at the basement one and there will be a lift going up to the hotel. If you want to go to the main road, press 1M. In my case, I need to check in and the hotel lobby is on level A. If you are not driving, you will be ushered into the hotel using the main entrance on the ground floor. There is this beautiful fountain in front of the hotel. Just walk across the wallet parking area and you will be welcomed by the bellboy. This is a simple ground floor lobby with beautiful decorations and some seating at the side. Move towards inside and turn left to the lift to get to the main lobby at level 8. Everything looks very grand and spacious at the lobby. High ceiling and full of daylight as the lobby is covered with ceiling to ground glass window. Plenty of couches and chairs at the lobby for guests to rest while waiting to check in or check out. Crystal stones are hanged as decorations on the ceiling to make the lobby look grand. The reception is rather small for a 5-star hotel. The view from this level 8 lobby is exactly the front entrance of the hotel where it is the intersection of both busy road in the city, the Jalan Raja Chulan on the left and the Jalan Bukit Bintang on the right. Now comes the drama that pissed me off when I check in. The check-in time is 3 p.m. and I was half an hour earlier reaching to the hotel and to be honest, I never encountered having a two-way for a room even I come slightly earlier all this while. Before that, on the pre-stay email which the hotel sent to me a week earlier, I mentioned I will be at the hotel at 2 p.m. So I expect they will have the room ready at least inform me if the occupancy is high and cannot get the early check-in done. 
but there is no one informing me anything. Anyway, I was told my room wasn't ready and got to wait for about 20 minutes. So I just sit on the lobby couch and waited until 2.50 p.m. and went to check again with the staff. The reception staff named Adam was quite rude, saying that the official check-in time is 3 p.m. and asked me to wait until the specific time given. To show my patience and there is less than 10 minutes before 3 p.m., I just stay back and wait. Right after 3 p.m., I went to check and tell myself I will make noise if I get the same answer again. Fortunately, the manager came to serve me and personally rushed up to the room to see if the housekeeping is done or not. By the time I got the key, it's already 3.15 p.m. What is worse is I booked a city oasis twin room and they gave me the courtyard oasis room which has no street view. Well, I was tired waiting and just accept it. I requested a high floor room and they gave me a room on level 9, the lowest floor room of the hotel which is just one floor above the lobby. They need me to wait? They give me a wrong type of room and never read what I requested on a high floor room. I would say this is the worst 5 star hotel check-in I ever had. It's not only me having an issue. So happen there's another guest having a problem which the manager has to solve while I was waiting for my key card at the lobby. This guest is quite angry with the voice raised during the conversation. When I got the key card, I started to think perhaps I have too high expectation for this hotel. Maybe I have to lower my expectation to zero so that I will not have get any more disappointment during my stay. As my room is just a level above the lobby, the lift reaches the level very fast. The anger feeling subsided instantly when I walk out from the lift as it's clean, tidy, with the smell of lemongrass at the corridor. Very calming and quiet as I like. The lighting along the corridor also soothed my eyes as I slowly walked towards to my room which located far from the lift, which I requested as well. is my room. This room is 32 square meters and has a very normal layout. From the front door, there is a shelf on the left for one to put maybe their keys. It's connected to the wardrobe and minibar. On the right is the toilet and a very huge mirror for one to check themselves before going out. I opted for a twin bed as I'm staying with my mom during this visit. Facing the bed is the TV with another shelf under it. There is no luggage rack, so one has to put their luggage on the floor which is carpeted. At the end corner is the business table and a couch with a stand lamp beside the window. Let's look at the view. This is not what I'm looking for. A courtyard. Very disappointed. On the business table, there is a pen and a pad which most hotels don't provide nowadays. There is an universal PowerPoint on the wall but no USB port here. There are two drawers, one is empty and another has letterheads and envelopes which most hotels don't provide nowadays too. On the bedside, there are switches which is clearly stated and also Type-G plugs and USB port. 
This is the part that I like most, the headlamp which is connected to the bed. One have to press and turn open to get the light. Another part I like is the leather couch which makes me think it's cleaner compared to fabric type. At least I will sit on it confidently. Now let's look at the mini bar. There are complementary mineral water that comes in big glass bottle, a kettle and a coffee making machine. In the first drawer, there are cups, coffee capsule and tea bags which comes in complementary. The second drawer has plates and culinary set. The third drawer has glasses while the last drawer is empty. At the side, there is a mini fridge and it's empty inside too. Let's check out the wardrobe. The top compartment has a laundry bag and shoe polisher and a safe at the bottom. More empty drawers over here. The next side of the wardrobe has lots of hangers, bathrobes, umbrellas, iron, iron board, and slippers. Ah, the luggage rack is hidden inside here. We'll see how the restroom looks like. It has a sliding door and facing it is the vanity area. There is a toilet cubicle which is separated by a door. On the vanity area, there's a hair dryer and weighting scale at the bottom of the basin. Toiletries are placed tidily in the box as we see here. More mineral water here. Hand wash and lotion are placed in a house brand bottle, which is nice. There is no bathtub in my room, but the shower area is separated by the glass and very bright. It comes with normal shower and rain shower with shower amenities using the house brand bottle too. I like the smell of these shower amenities. The restroom is the best part of the room because it's clean and bright. This is the lowest range of room they have in this hotel. So I will not make much comment on the design and the amenities they offer. But at least, it has what 5-star hotel room has to offer. I'm interested in looking at the hotel facilities which are located on the rooftop of level 18. Upon coming out from the lift, in front is the swimming pool. On the left is the gym and on the right is the changing room. Let's visit the gym first. It's called the Sky Gym as it's located on the rooftop with the view of the city. It's filled with daylight as the three corners are ceilings to floor glass window where one can look at the city while walking out here. It's not a big gym but well equipped. Most importantly, all gym equipments are placed not too near to each other. The hotel do conduct classes as you see in this timetable here. So if one wants to do some workout with trainer for free, do look out for this schedule here. The gym is open 24 hours daily. Next, let's move to the outdoor where there is an infinity pool.
This is what I always say, infinity pool has to be a pool with infinity view without anything blocking. Although the swimming pool is not big, but swimming here can be really nice with the view without any glass blocking. There is a shower at one side for guests to shower before getting into the pool. Some lounges are very limited here, so at times this place can be very crowded. Early in the morning is the best time to swim here. There are towels and icy water provided at the entrance of this swimming pool. There is neither pool bar nor any jacuzzi facilities available in this hotel. This place operates from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. The operation time considered long for a city hotel, and guests can have a night swim during their stay. Let's check out the changing room which is located on the right side when one comes out from the lift. I will make my way to the men's changing room. It's pretty bright as inside this place has few sections. The section facing the entrance is the dressing up place with a huge mirror and hair dryer. Behind is the basin area with basic amenities provided beside the basin. Meanwhile, the toilets are located facing the basins. The next section beside the dressing place are the lockers, where towels are provided here. Further in is the shower area. There are two cubicle shower, and inside there is normal shower head and rain shower with shower amenities provided. But I'm not sure if anyone cleans this place or not as it fills with urine smell inside. Very disgusting. On the far end is the sauna which is not on, so one may need to get help if wants to use it. The hotel has three restaurants and bar beside the club lounge for normal guests to visit. The Curve is a bar located on level 7M which opens at 6pm till 12 midnight. Jet Pavilion is a Chinese restaurant located at level 8, same level as the lobby which operates from 12 noon till 10 pm. Last and not least is the all-day dining restaurant called the Courtyard where I will be having my breakfast tomorrow. But other than the Courtyard for breakfast, I don't see the rest of the restaurants and bar can sell well here because the Pavilion shopping mall is just under this hotel. One can easily find food, lots of food there. The main selling point for this hotel is it is located on a pavilion shopping mall where one can dine and shop without going far from where they stay. Guests can get to the mall without going outside of the hotel building. There are two ways of getting to the mall. Firstly, one can access from the ground lobby where there is an escalator on the right from the entrance. Upon going up, we we'll reach to the second floor of the shopping mall. Secondly, one can access using the lift that directly linked to the level 8 lobby. So one can just come down from level 8 and there are two floors that link to the shopping mall, level 2 and level 3. However, the lift and escalator only operates from 10 am till 10 pm, which is also the operate time for the shopping mall. The 
The next morning, I make my way to the courtyard restaurant to have my breakfast. This restaurant is huge, where there are plenty of seats here and there, and it's clean and bright. The seating area consists of two parts, the indoor and the outdoor. So do the food area where some are located at indoor and some are located at outdoor. Very interesting. The buffet breakfast have a variety of choices of food from Asian to Western. Let's take a look one by one. The first column, there are many types of pastries, which I love. Further at the end are the bread section with limited choices of jams. Inside here, there is a cereal section with juice section at the side. Facing it is the open kitchen area where there is a noodle station. Next to it is a very rare food I found in hotel, the Lo Mai Kai, a Chinese glutinous steamed rice with chicken. Then there are hot dishes like rice, stewed beef, sausages, bacon, tomatoes, and soup. Opposite these columns is the salad section with lots of dressing. Next to it, there are many flavors of yogurts and dry food here. Here, there is egg section where there are boiled eggs, scrambled eggs, and even egg station where one can order custom type of egg dish. On the other end here is the coffee and tea session where one can make their own. In the fish, there are cold meat and cheese. Let's go to the outdoor and take a look. There are plenty of seats in this area too. It's not air conditioned, but it's very cozy and shaded without any heat here. It's not that packed like the indoor as most guests prefer to sit near the, to the food. One can really enjoy the outdoor air and the ambience here. Here we can see the Merdeka 118 building as well. There is a fountain feature at the end where the sound of water really makes one feel so nice while having the breakfast. Here, there are stores where more food are available here. There is Roti Chanai station with lots of gravy to go with it. And breakfast is incomplete without local Malay food like satay and nasi lemak. The breakfast begins from 6.30 a.m. till 10.30 a.m. daily. So the outdoor may be a little dark if one comes for breakfast too early. The best time to enjoy breakfast at the outdoor is 7 a.m. onwards. And one no need to worry on the seating as this place is really huge. So this is the only part I want to shout about for this hotel as most other hotels may need one to queue for seat during peak time. The convenience of getting into the shopping mall may be one benefit that attracts many guests to stay here. Because of this reason, this hotel always fully occupied by locals and tourists every day, even on a weekday where I'm staying here. 
Besides having the check-in issue which I just mentioned earlier in the video due to the high occupancy that caused the management to misplace my booking off and on, there are guests checking in to this hotel even on V hours. The hotel room doesn't really have a good soundproof system. So at times, I can hear guests dropping luggage on the floor from the other rooms which sounds like thunder rumbling during resting time at night. This hotel may not reach my expectation, but if you are just looking for a decent 5-star hotel to rest and shower, and most of the time you will be out there, then it's a very suitable hotel as it is very well accessible. However, if you intend to have a quiet me-time staycation like what I'm doing, you better stay away from this hotel. Even though this is a 5-star hotel, my personal rating may not be that good due to the issue I encountered during my stay. Here is my rating for this hotel. Have you stayed in this hotel before? Do you have other things to add on besides what I have mentioned? Please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and do subscribe my channel if you'd like to see more of my videos and it means a lot to me. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again on my next video. Till then, bye!